What's going on guys, it's Brandon back again, and we got our first power rankings of the year, besides the preseason one, so the first one during the year. This is how I see the teams currently, just so we know. This is not how I think the teams are going to finish, this is just where I think they are currently in the space of 32 teams. And, without question, I think we got to start with 32 and 31, which are the obvious ones, which are the teams with no wins. So at number 32, we have down one spot from last time, they were at 31, now they're at 32. The Arizona Coyotes, you may be probably thinking Chicago has more losses. Yes, but Chicago has NHL players on their team fully. Arizona does not, and they are not trying to. So, let me just put this eraser down here. Because uh, i got notes written down on the bottom here. And um, without now we can move on to 31. Down 18 spots from where I ranked them originally. And very disappointing, Chicago Blackhawks. Haven't won a game. 0-7-2, my favorite team. It's miserable to see them there. It's miserable to put them there, and I don't favor my favorite team. I mean, I wish I could, but I don't. This is for just integrity and just being fair. And, yeah, it's just I'm shocked that Chicago brings in all these Seth Jones, Marc-Andre Fleury, a uh, bit of depth on the defense, Tyler Johnson on offense, who's now injured. Kane hasn't been there all the time, but still, you got to win some of these games. You, you can't, that game against Vancouver, you can't lose. The game against St. Louis, that was one nothing. That's one you need to score a goal in. And there are just other games that you just cannot let it happen. The way, Colorado, against Colorado, against Pittsburgh, against Carolina. They just let goals go in back-to-back -back instantly, and that's what puts them in holes that they cannot be in. Now we got number 30, we got Montreal. Only reason they're not at, uh, they're down nine spots from where I put them. And L.A., who beat them last night, is down five spots from where I originally put them. All, the only reason I connected these two is because L.A. beat Montreal last night, so therefore they go ahead. If Montreal beat an L.A., I would have put L.A. at 30, but they are spared since they won. Yeah, not much to say about these teams, just a lot of injuries in L.A. and Montreal, just not a lot of goals, no, not, nothing's clicking the way it was supposed to when this team was put together in free agency when Shea Weber and Carey Price aren't going to be there. Now, down 12 spots from last time. Many people may be confused, but I think Dallas is number 28. And that's because I believe that they just can't score. This team cannot score goals, and that's kind of always been the issue with Dallas, except for 2016 when they won the division somehow. But that, that's one of those just, I that works. But, um, yeah, it's really off to say about them. Then our first one that moved up, moving up three spots from last time, we have Anaheim. They they started the season off really well. I've cooled down a bit, and uh, this is a young team, uh, an inexperienced team. They got some experience with Getzloff and Shattenkirk on that team. Josh Gibson and Net Fowler still there, but this team's got a lot of young players, and uh, I, I'm this team could be really good in a few years with a with a few more years of rebuilding and getting some high draft picks, maybe doing a big splash in free agency next season. And we'll see how that goes. Now we move on down nine spots from last time. Another disappointing team to me. Especially with those contracts that have been signed. Quinn Hughes has been fine. I haven't seen much of Patterson. I've seen a little bit, but not a great amount. You have Vancouver. Down nine spots. And disappointing in my opinion since I already had a lot of these teams already in the top 16. I had Chicago in the top 16. Dallas was there. And Vancouver was one I just had barely outside. And... Uh, yeah, I had him at 17 last time, and they're already disappointing me. Which, as someone who watches the hockey guy and knows how big of a Vancouver fan he is, and he's just given up at this point, my my blessings to you, uh, Shannon. Uh, love your videos. Just shout out to you while I'm here. And whoever watches this should go over and watch his channel. Makes great content every day. A lot more videos than I do. And... If you want a guy who gives his heart to the game of hockey, his heart and soul, the hockey guy is your guy. Um, next, we have a team that moved up one spot from last time. It's, uh, if, I can get, if I can get the magnet off, Ottawa. Ottawa's number 25. They have, are interesting because there are teams that shouldn't be winning games that are winning games, and then there are teams that should be winning games that aren't. And that is Ottawa. Ottawa's played so well. They should. I would have put them in the top 16 if their record was better. But they play so well with this team, and they just can never seem to win. 
they just can't. I love the way Iowa was played. They just always come up, up up the short end of the stick, and it's unfortunate for them. And now we got the third row of doom, as I like to call it, as a lot of the teams in this row are going to be uh, make me look bad from preseason, but it's still early in the season. But uh, yeah, so we got our worst of the worst over here, Ottawa. I'm going to disclude from that. But uh, moving 20 spots down, you have Vegas. Vegas has suffered injuries, Stone and Pacioretty, among, amongst others. There's just, it's quite been a lot, very questionable going on. They've been improving. That, that, that got them, if, they, if they, they've been winning a few games recently, otherwise they would have, Ottawa and Vancouver would have been above them. But they've been improving, and uh, they're going, they're trending in the right direction. It's just been not enough to move them up any higher than 24th, in my opinion. And next, we have another very disappointing team to start the season. They've been getting hotter, though. They've, they've won a few in a row now. Toronto. I wanted Chicago to beat Toronto so bad. I wanted Steve Dangle to freak out. Oh, it would have been it would have made my day. But what can you do? Chicago takes a 2-0 lead. The Toronto comes back. Story of the Hawks. Man. Yeah, they moved, moved down nine spots from where I originally had them. And, I mean, they're getting hotter this the Atlantic Division kind of sucks this year. I'm not even gonna lie. I mean, the three teams that I, the three teams that uh, I still have that are in the top sixteen. I have three teams in the top sixteen from the Atlantic, and everything else is pretty just cut and dry. Like, how many teams from the Atlantic have I already had? I have Montreal. You got Ottawa. Now Toronto. That's already three. And then you still got one coming up here, and then. Yeah, I got a few others down the road. And I think I might have missed... No, that's... Yeah, that's right. Um, did I miss anything? No, I didn't. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking like that. And then moving down another 21 spots from where I originally had them. Colorado. Off to a disappointing start. They'll kick it on. They'll make the playoffs. I'm not worried for Colorado. This is a team that is simply built to win. McKinnon, Rantanen, Landeskog. They got Kemper... In net, like, he's been pretty okay, I'd say. Um, got guys like, the guys they've lost, like Brandon Saad and Don Skoy that were contributing to goal scoring. That's kind of been lost a bit. They still got plenty of talent on this team. McCarr has been a beast. But, um, yeah, it's really, it's been disappointing starts for those three teams specifically. It's been disappointing starts for, I'd say, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight teams right now. And that I would call disappointing starts and not expected. Ottawa is in the category where I'd say they should be doing better than what's because of just statistics show that they should be winning. And then number 21 got Tampa. People may complain about this because Tampa really hasn't done bad, but it's just they've just been there. They, everyone predicts them to be number one in the division at the start of the year. And like, they're going to three-peat because uh, even though they lost half their team because of the salary cap, yeah, they're just going to repeat just like that. No, that's not how it works. I don't know. All these like analysts and genius sports geniuses say like, Tampa's going to make the playoffs. They're going to win the division because they because they won back-to-back Stanley Cups. That's not how it works. You lose a lot of your team, you're not going to be the same team. Look at the Hawks from 2010. Bufflin, Versteeg, Ladd, Sopel, Eager, Burrish, Niemi, Huey, all of those players that I can think of off the top of my head, gone. And not to mention others. And that team, then the Hawks finished 8th seed in the Western Conference and barely made it in on the last day of the season in 2011. Tampa loses Coleman, uh, Goodrow, uh, Johnson, um, that one other guy on that one line. Um, I can't think of his name right now. But that's the point. You, get, you lose all these guys. Uh, David Savard is now in Montreal. Um, Kucherov's injured. Like that's just not how it works. Like you, you can't just say a team's winning the division because even though they've lost half their team, I've never understood that about sports at all. But that's enough ranting about that. Sorry about that. But now we move on. I just wanted to voice my opinion on that. Number twenty. We have a team that doing pretty well for their expansion season. We got the Kraken. They were pretty bad early on. They were like one, one three and one or something like that, or one four and one. But they've strung a couple of wins in a row now. They moved down five spots from where I originally had them. 
But overall, not a disappointing start for the Kraken. In a Pacific division, that's been surprising, to say the least. Uh, if they're in a good spot. They were in a, pl- they were, they were in a playoff spot yesterday before uh, Vegas won. They were the second wild card. So, and again, so was Dallas. But that's that's uh, move on. Now down 14 spots from last time, we have the Islanders. If I can get their magnet off. Islanders are not a regular season team. They are built for the playoffs, so I'm not worried about them. Barry Trotz coach team, built with system. They'll make it into the playoffs. Just, just They'll do just enough to make it into the playoffs. Then they'll cruise through as they always do. Wouldn't be surprised if they made a third conference final. Do I have them go into the finals, though? We'll see. Um, okay. Got two more teams in uh, for 17 and 18. And then at 18, we got the Columbus Blue Jackets. Realize how that's this is these are my first two metropolitan teams. No team, no team in that division has a losing record. Absolutely phenomenal division right there. No team has a losing record. The, their first metropolitan team is at 19, which says a lot. Well, in the Pacific Division, you got Arizona here, you got LA, Anaheim, Vancouver, Vegas. Uh, that's already this is a crack, and that's already six. And, yeah, there's only two, uh, three more Pacific... Wait a minute. I just counted wrong. There's no way that's possible. But, um, anyway. Yeah, Columbus goaltending's been pretty good. This is just... I don't, will they keep up in this division? Who knows? People thought that they were going to be really bad this year. I mean, maybe in their division. But, so far, they've been done pretty well. Merz Leakins and Corpus Allo have been pretty good. And, um, yeah. Now, move up to number 17. We have Boston. Mostly because they haven't played as many games as most teams yet, so we don't really have a big sample size. Um, and I don't know, this team's just been kind of there. There's well, these next few teams have been like the definition of irrelevant. You got Columbus, you got Boston, and the the one after this like def, like is the, like the end of the irrelevant stage. So you got like from here to here, you can just like mark the irrelevant lines. Currently, is what I'd call them. And. Um, Am I irrelevant? I don't mean any offense. I mean this, like, they just could be kind of there. Like, no one's paid attention to any of them. I've never not seen any news on any of them. I've just been kind of see- seeing bits and pieces and nothing really much else. Just basically, like, news articles saying, oh, yeah, this team won again or lost again. And it's not really much to say. And to, ar- to end the uh, realm of, irrele- of relevancy, we have Nashville at number 16. Up nine spots. And... We'll say I haven't been impressed with Nashville, even though they've not been. Uh, they weren't. I I had them all the way up uh, here last time. Uh, they've been pretty good to start off the gate, especially with the losses they've suffered. Uh, fourth in the division, I believe, currently. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah. I also want to briefly want to mention before we continue. There are teams like the Islanders are not last in the Metropolitan. They're I, they're fifth right now. I've just seen Columbus has been playing better. I've seen other all every team in that division just be playing better. There are teams that are just playing better that if I just went off records, people could just look that up. I took out the teams of the way the I, I take this the way a team's been playing and what I've witnessed. But yeah, so I just want to make that clear. And then at number fifteen we have Philadelphia. Pleasant surprise. Up seven spots from where I originally had them. And they've been playing really good recently. They've won a few games in a row now. And um, I'll see if they can keep the streak going, as both streaks, I'd say, the winning streak and uh, making the playoffs every other year. We'll see how that goes. And number 14, we have the New Jersey Devils, who are currently 7th in that division, but I've, what I've seen, they played really well. Jack Hughes has been injured, and they've still been able to win games a few times. And uh, yeah, New Jersey's been playing really well. they got a bright future. And do I, will they make the playoffs this year? Maybe. Maybe not, probably not, but we'll see how they continue to continue into the month of November. And now, down five spots from last time to number thirteen, we have the Winnipeg Jets. They've not been really disappointing. They've just lost a lot of games, lost a lot of games against teams they shouldn't lose to. This team could honestly be number one in the power rankings if they had. They've lost to San Jose in overtime last night. They lost to Anaheim early in the year, and. Stuff like that, that's just, Winnipeg could be a lot better than they are, but they're just sometimes that games get stolen from them, or they just won't play up to their expectation. Now, top 12, moving down one spot from last time, we have Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh, you're probably wondering why they're so high after they've lost three games in a row. Crosby's back. Carter's back. Latang and Malkin and aren't back yet, but with Crosby and Carter back, that'll give them a boost. And they've been playing well without them. They went oh, they went 3-0 and 2 in their first 5 games without them. So well not, not without Carter. Carter played a few games, but they still been they've still now they've got some weapons to use Crosby, best player in the world for a while. What any more? No. McDavid has taken that mantle. Anyone that tries to combat that argument will not win. And um yeah, that's really off to say on Pittsburgh. Uh, now we got a pleasant, another pleasant surprise. Up 18 spots in a team that needs to win if their general manager doesn't want to get fired or their team or Eric Carlson doesn't want to say he doesn't want to rebuild again. Number 11, San Jose. Up 18 spots. What's changed about this team? Great question because I can't really see much. Dowland's been pretty good for them. I like the way he's been playing. Reimer absolutely screwed the Jets out of a win. He stole that one from... Winnipeg. What can I say? San Jose has been off to a surprisingly good start. Is this sustainable? We'll see. Again, this is just where I think they are right now. This isn't the, into what I see them going as in the future. I just want to put that that way. Realize how you haven't seen Buffalo yet. Or Detroit. And, um, yeah. Now we have number 10 on the list. We got Minnesota. That's a, Minnesota's a team I find weird this year. This year I expected them to be great, and they've been strangely inconsistent. They're just they're either winning games that they shouldn't win. They've been coming back from multi-goal deficits, which is not a thing you want to do, but they've been able to do it. Eventually, it's going to run out. You got to be consistent. That's for sure. I apologize. I returned. I had an issue to deal with. So yeah, Minnesota and strangely inconsistent. Gone five, five and three currently. I'm pretty sure. And there's this, there, there's other games that like I see them winning and they don't win, or they winning games that I don't see them winning. It's just back and forth, and it's just the inconsistency that they have right now is kind of strange. But this is a Minnesota team that has Kaprizov, Fiala, Eric Sinek, Spurgeon in, on the back end. Talbot's been playing well, and they have Kakinen if they need to go to him. So I'm not worried about this team. Victor Rask is also there. He's been having a bounce back with uh, Minnesota compared to where his past times have been with Capri- with Caprice anything with Caprice off makes things better. You haven't seen as much about him this year though. And then number 9, up 14 spots from last time, we have a team that's been playing really well. Detroit. Detroit has been playing fantastic. I love the way they've been playing. I've been saying Detroit's going to be great. Not not maybe not this year, maybe not make the playoffs this year, but in the near future, Steve I- Steve Eiserman built teams are are always great. Look at Tampa, back to back Stanley Cups. They had that President's Trophy in six with sixty two wins. Say what you want, that's a, that's a fantastic feat. I mean, it's an embarrassing thing about them getting swept by Columbus, but that's not the point. And um, yeah, the I- Steve Eiserman built teams are built to win. That's kind of what they do now. Uh, two times with the Lightning. And now he's with the, he's been with Detroit for a few years now. He's been getting uh, pieces. Ray, Lucas Raymond looked fantastic. Um, excuse me. And uh, yeah, uh, now we got number eight and up twenty four spots from originally. We got Buffalo. Where they came out of, I don't know. Where Craig Anderson came out of, his forty year old self came out of. Don't know. Um. Yeah, Buffalo's been a, the most biggest surprise. 5-1-1 one, one currently. Beating some pr- pretty decent opponents as well. They beat Tampa 5-1. Um, and they've just been... They lost to New Jersey somehow. And that, of all the games they lose, they lose to New Jersey in a shootout. Or was it overtime? I don't remember. I just remember it was an overtime shootout loss. But, yeah. A great surprise for Buffalo. They always start off good early, though. We saw in 2019-20, they went 13-3. And then in the first 16 games, and like 17-5-2... And then proceed to miss the bubble playoffs. So, don't get super hype about them. This is just where I see them now currently. Now we got number 7, up 11 spots. Come on. The New York Rangers. Playing pretty well. Uh, not sure if I like the way they've been playing. If they've been playing well, they've been able to win games. They, they, me just, just watching them, I'm not a big fan of the way they play. 
I like Panarin. I like Zabanajad. When they're on the ice, it's always fun. But getting Reeves and Sammy Blay and Goodrow, I've just not been a big fan of the team since. I always was more of an Islanders than a Rangers guy. But, uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say about them. Now, top six, number thir- up 13 spots, Calgary, leading the Pacific Division right now. Only because Edmonton hasn't played enough games to catch up to them yet. But they, after losing the first two games and one in regulation, one in overtime, they have won every single game since then. 6-1-1 one, one is their current record. This is the bounce back this team needed. Daryl Sutter's implementing a system. This team is going with the system. And this team is a team I want to see succeed. Goodrow, Monaghan, um, all these guys that I've been wanting to see succeed. And L- Lindholm's been on a tear. So we'll see how they if they can continue. <clears throat> now do, down two spots. Apologize for the cough. Uh, down two spots from last time. We got Washington. Uh, yeah, five zero and three haven't lost in regulation. So not, not nothing to complain about for Washington. Just that they're not ahead of their division right now. And the team that is is undefeated. So nothing unashamed of being there. So all I have to say about Washington is keep it up. And this team Ovechkin is going to pass Brent Hall any second now. Uh, apologize for that. It's my ESPN app going off. And um, now at number four, we got the leaders of the divisions. St. Louis with a win over one nothing win over Chicago. Not convincing win, that's for sure. As I said in my BFR previously today, up 17 spots from where I had them. They've looked excellent. They've only lost one game. And not really much to say about them. Their win was in, not convincing over Chicago, but the teams they've been able to beat... Still pretty good wins overall. And let's see if they can keep it up and take the Central Division, maybe by surprise. Now, up three spots from last time. Edmonton. What can I say? Any team with Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. Zach Hyman's been doing fantastic in Edmonton. And Jesse Pugliarvi. This team, I feel like, can do something this year. This year feels different than the rest. I had them going far in the playoffs last year. I had them going into the conference final and losing. Now, after being swept by Winnipeg, this team has something different in them. Bringing in Hyman brings a defensive stance stance to the team. They've only lost one game as well. They've looked excellent, and we'll see how that goes. And now, top two, down one spot from where I originally had them. We have the Florida Panthers. Firing Coach Q because of the allegations and not allegations, they're not allegations anymore. Um, over the uh, issue that he didn't take control and handle the situation back in 2010, he's gone. Andrew Brunette's been interim head coach. He's they, Aunt Florida's finally lost a game, their last game. They're now 8 0 and 1. They haven't lost in regulation though, so they're getting points. So I still see this team being the President's Trophy winner. Nothing is going to change my mind about that. But so far, I just see them down one spot because the team that is number one has been a machine. And their 6-3 win over Chicago uh, just implemented that this team is going to do big things this year, even without they traded away Fogel. Frederick Anderson and Auntie Ranta have looked good. Frederick Anderson's had a bounce back with Carolina that he didn't, that he was looked dead in Toronto. But Carolina number one. Fantastic. 7-0-0, I think the record is right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if they can go to 10 games, 12 games, before they lose. This team just looks unstoppable right now. And I'm surprised. I thought they were going to be maybe take a step back without Fogel, without uh, Nedeljkovic, Morazic, Reimer. There's their three goalies. Uh, you bring in Ethan Bayer. He's been good. Tony D'Angelo. Say what you want about him off the ice, on the ice. Uh, he's been phenomenal. Against Chicago, he put up phenomenal numbers. Uh, although I may not see eye-to-eye eye on what he's done with the Rangers and basically being a, a cancer on the team, in Carolina it seems to work. So good for him. I hope he can get his career back on track, and it looks like he is in Carolina. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Tell me what you think down below. What teams do you have that you would change? And we'll see how November goes. And we'll update this on November 30th. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.